You are representing Mayors for Peace here, along with Mayor Matsui, the President of Mayors for Peace from Hiroshima. What were the main messages that Mayors for Peace had for this open-ended working group? Well, uh, the primary message is that uh, weapons that are as evil as nuclear weapons um, have no place in a civilized world, and cities are the heart of, the, of our civilization, and nuclear weapons are designed to destroy cities, tearing the heart out of civilization. And did Mayor's Peace come up with any proposals about how to get to a nuclear weapons free world? Well, um, there are already many good proposals out, so uh, there's not a, a great need for more. Um, we did suggest that a, a basic principle of um, delegitimizing or stigmatizing uh, the use of weapons to cause mass destruction uh, would be something that maybe there could be consensus on. Uh, and, uh, of course, for cities, it would make a great difference if the nuclear armed states would renounce any plans or preparations they're making to destroy cities. Now, uh, Mayors for Peace has got membership in, I think, around 7,000 cities. They're from non-nuclear states, from nuclear armed states, and from those allied states. Uh, there seem to be differences, well nuclear armed states weren't even here, and there seem to be differences between the nuclear allied states and the non-nuclear states. Do you think there's a possibility of some common action coming out of the open-ended working group, or is it going to be split different actions from those well, different types of states? Let me just briefly mention that uh, the U.S. Conference of Mayors, which represents uh, the 1,000 largest cities in the United States, uh, took a position that the U.S. government should be at this conference and should participate in these discussions. And I think the, their allies, most of whom were here, are embarrassed by the fact uh, that neither the United States, uh, France, nor uh, the U.K. are in attendance. Um, Russia, China, and um, the other nuclear arms states uh, have not received uh, as much direct attention, uh, but they too are on call by the tiny island state of the Republic of the Marshall Islands, and uh, they are not strengthening their case by boycotting these talks. So at the moment, you talk about the Marshall Islands, they yes. have a case in the Int International Court of Justice, uh, running against three of the nuclear armed states, That's UK, right. UK, India and Pakistan. So far there hasn't been support from other uh, states for this case, uh, but that's maybe because it hasn't got to the merits yet. Do you yeah, think there'll be more countries coming to support that once they get to the well, merits stage? Well, I would hope stage? so, uh, and cities maybe could uh, uh, play a role in urging uh, national governments to pile on uh, once it's clear that uh, there will be a serious case. Um, uh, I'm hopeful about that. Um, I think that uh, with the failure of the NPT Review Conference, with the boycott of the open-ended working group, um, the judges can't help but see that there is something wrong and that the, um, basically the marching orders that they gave countries in 1996 have been ignored by the key players. Mm -hmm. So um, uh, I'm, I'm hopeful that this, uh, it, it would be kind of odd if they didn't see the merits in the case. Uh, now, uh, and at that point, uh, definitely, we need to uh, make sure that uh, the Marshall Islands aren't alone. Mm. And this is a case, of course, on the obligation to pursue negotiations in, uh, on nuclear disarmament in good faith. Right. Uh, one test of good faith people are asking is President Obama, who put forward the Prague vision, putting yeah. forward the, uh, the commitment to a nuclear yeah. weapons-free world, but it hasn't seemed to be yeah. implemented to some degree. But President Obama is going to Hiroshima soon. Yeah. Do you have any expectations on, on this visit? Well, the, last, the most recent thing I read about that is that he's not planning to make a speech. Oh. Uh, which can all be very solemn ceremonies mm -hmm. and such and such, and uh, has a certain um, symbolic value. Mm -hmm. uh, but um, an opportunity could be missed, obviously. Mm -hmm. it, the Prague speech, if you analyze it, um, had a, a brilliant packaging, uh, but the contents of the package 
uh, were mainly about nonproliferation. I, I would say almost exclusively about nonproliferation. Um, and I think that, that, that wouldn't fly in Hiroshima. If it's going to say anything or, or offer anything in Hiroshima, it has to deal directly with the objective of achieving uh, a nuclear weapon-free world. So there has been a series of nuclear security summits which have helped the non-proliferation side of it. Mm -hmm. On the nuclear disarmament side, there's also been a proposal for similar nuclear disarmament summits. Do you think that might be something that could help uh, elevate and move the uh, disarmament agenda forward? Anything that involves, that, that um, gets heads of government and heads of state uh, engaged in this issue uh, is positive because there's really been a lack of such engagement. Um, uh, in that sense, the Prague speech uh, stands out a bit. Um, but uh, I'm not sure uh, we're ready uh, for summits. Let me put it another way. <laughs> uh, there is a high-level meeting scheduled uh, for 2018. This would be organized by the United Nations. Um, it would be good if that meeting was attended by heads of government, heads of state, mm -hmm. and certainly no lower than foreign minister. Mm -hmm. However, to be productive, uh, there needs to be preparation. But since it's a head of government uh, or high-level meeting, uh, that preparation has to be led at the high level. And so I would be very much in favor of a self-organizing group of high-level leaders um, making preparations for that s summit and uh, encouraging uh, other heads of government to get involved and be at that summit, uh, I would love to see that. Is this along the lines of how the Six Nation Initiative in the late 19... 90s, 80s, yeah, in terms, brought the leaders yeah. of Soviet Union and the United States together. Yeah, exactly. Um, uh, there it was a self-organizing, although it was an NGO that catalyzed it, Parliamentarians for Global Action. Um, uh, that group of six leaders um, served as a very useful um, uh, bridge between East and West. And they were fortunate that their efforts coincided with the emergence of uh, a much more forward-looking uh, leader in Russia, Gorbachev. And um, uh, in that context, uh, there, at that time, there were no discussions whatsoever going on between East and West. And the initiatives by this more or less neutral group, although it did include uh, Greece as a NATO member, um, allowed Gorbachev to prove his bona fides without looking like he was completely buying into the U.S. position, which would have been hard to sell to his Politburo. So it served a good role. Uh, the situation is different today. <laughs> um, we have all the nuclear weapon states and nuclear armed states boycotting this. And so... Um, the task of broadening the involvement in the 2018 conference uh, is uh, a bigger challenge, but there's also a lot more mobilization and support that could uh, make that work. Mm -hmm. So uh, we'll see if leaders um, uh, respond, uh, to what degree they might be helped and rely upon NGOs to get something rolling. Uh, so we're entering an interesting period. Okay. NGO cooperation will probably be quite helpful for this. There's a lot of different non-governmental organizations. And yeah. uh, this week, Michael Douglas hosts an event to bring the non-governmental organizations together. Mm -hmm. Do you think that might help uh, more cooperation and a stronger civil society movement? Well, yeah. They can't, it's, it's, um, uh, I think now that there is some momentum uh, going, uh, it's easier for NGOs to unify. Um, when things are stagnant, uh, everybody wants to try something. And uh, right now, it's quite clear from this meeting that what ICANN tr decided to try back in Oslo um, is working within its own parameters. And those of us who've 
had other ideas or who have um, uh, expressed misgivings or doubts or questioned it from different angles, um, we can now see that it's happening. And uh, how important it is will be played out. Uh, but um, I think we all have to get behind it. There's no doubt about that. Um, the question then is, uh, because it's probably a, an activity that won't engage certain parts of the world immediately, what it does do, though, is it opens up space for ideas that aren't quite as radical to take root. So you see, for example, Sweden putting forward ideas that they might not have put forward a year ago and getting a reception uh, in quarters where you wouldn't have expected it at all a year ago. So things are going to get interesting. Um, and uh, the 2018 conference could be coming at a really good moment in that whole mix. Someone talked about a perfect storm at, at uh, uh, I think he was using it in a different sense, but uh, I've used that term myself now that I think of it. <laughs> and it it's, could be that we see something like that developing in the next, well, up through 2018. Okay. Thanks, Aaron.